So explain why you've got this little dial indicator set up in this uh, dummy block. Okay, good question. Um, so from factory, uh, any manufacturer of crankshafts mass produce crankshafts pretty quickly. Um, whether, whether it be Honda doing selective fit pistons in bores, Toyota do the same, Nissan do it all. The, everything's done very, very quickly. So there's going to be incorrect intolerance and you'll find things like bearings have uh, color codes or sizing codes. And one of the things you'll find is like this has a two on it. This could potentially be a two indicating it's a two size indication, which means a two tenths of a thou or a few tenths of a thou out from what OEM would think. So after it's bored and honed and finished from OEM, a laser indicator will go in, measure the bore, and then print on the side of the block a number. You'll find it here, two, 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 and two. So the tolerance on this block was perfect. So all these pistons will be twos. You might find one will be two, three, three, four. That means this machine from factory is starting to go out of tolerance. And you'll find that when the assembler comes through, he'll look at the block and say two, 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 sweet. And he'll grab four, two pistons from the shelves. Now, if there's different sizes, he'll grab the pistons to suit that bore. It's the same for bearings. And this relates now back to our crankshaft indexing. When you grind a crankshaft, you'll find that the, the indexing of the crankshaft might not be exactly correct. Meaning number one pin and number four pin might be slightly out. Might be one degree, might be two, could be worse. Some Toyota engines in diesels are up to 10 degrees out. And this is a massive problem over a period of time where they start damaging the engines. And crankshaft grinders or engine reconditioners will come, grind the crankshaft and notice very quickly that the indexing is out between one and four and then exactly 180 degrees over two and three. So what we wanna do here, and because the harmonic balancer also acts as a degree wheel, having every degree laser etched into the damper, we can actually confirm that when we set up our, pit, our line for top, for top dead center at zero with our timing, with our plastic timing cover, when we bolt the, the balancer on, our zero should, should line up with our zero mark on the actual harmonic damper. Now, when we move it to five degrees, five and five should line up and so forth and so forth. But now we have to confirm that when we go to zero, the piston actually reaches the top of the bore, indicating that we are actually at zero because a plastic cover and a mark on an, on an oil pump might not be 100% correct. So when we go and attach this and set it to zero, we should see as we come up to zero, our dial gauge should reach its peak before falling. Now you're gonna have dwell, and dwell is where there's a period of time as the piston comes over top dead center, it dwells for a short amount of time before falling. But that still should, we should be within zero degrees. Now, because I've got a dummy piston and rod set up in this block, we should be able to test number one and four, and then exactly 180 degrees over, we should be able to test two and three. And we should be able to see that replicated on our plastic timing cover that gives us a zero mark and five degrees either side and 180 degrees mark on our harmonic balancer. So now when the car, when this goes into action in the car, we can actually set the dial gauge up on the top of the motor with our balancer on, and we can actually clock to see if we are out in timing and check our phasing on our crank, crankshaft correct. Now, what does that, what does that mean? What does that, what does that tell us? It means that when we go to tune the vehicle, we can actually program in the pinion the indexing offsets. So when you work on a, a tune-up, you assume that everything is 180 degrees out from each other. Number one and four are directly in line, or 360. And then the two and three are gonna be exactly in line in that, in that degree. But if we're out one or two degrees either side, we can program that into the ECU to tell it. So every time we put 10 degrees into a cylinder of timing, it gets 10 degrees, not nine, not eight, not 11 or 12, it gets 10. And that's what we're looking to do here. It's a very simple thing to do, and you generally will not find these marks on an OEM balancer. Okay, so now if we come up to top dead center, and that's indicated by two, two things. We've got a the piston obviously coming up to the top of the bore, and on the factory 4A gear inside here, and the oil pump housing, you can actually see a notch as we come up to top dead, there it is, there it's starting to come up, bam. That's, we're talking top dead center there. If we look back at our dial gauge now, we're registering zero. Now, if I put my harmonic damper ring on, so on these, they're marked. Here, you have an offset hole here on the damper. That offset hole is marked here. 
just with a pin punch or a drill. So let's move this around to here. I'll bolt this on and we'll double check, make sure everything lines up. Okay, so we're just shy of top dead center now. As you can see, she's saying we're about... So if I line this up with our top dead center mark and I wind this over, if we watch our degree, our dial gauge, as she starts to come up, I won't even look, I'll tell you when I'm at top dead center. There. So if we look at this, right on zero. Top dead center lines up with zero. So we now can confirm that our crankshaft is now in phase with our with our Woodruff keyway, and the Woodruff keyway is cut perfectly to the top dead center offset to our plastic cover. So this, this, and our crankshaft all line up with number one. So if I was now to put number one piston and rod in number four, we should have the same result without having an index in a, a, a crank indexing position between one and four. If I did, and it was two degrees out, and I was at two degrees before top dead center, or two degrees after top dead center, this crankshaft would now have to be programmed into the Haltech or Motec or Mtron or whatever ECU you desire. You would program in that two degrees of incorrection so that when you do put 10 degrees or 20 degrees of timing in the engine, it holds 20 and not 22 or 18 on that cylinder because yeah. we're basing everything off number one. We're not basing anything off number four. Yeah. It's all off number one. Yeah. So now we want to index the crankshaft. And this is something we can do now in the vehicle. Once we put the balancer on, we can index with the dial gauge. Obviously, we'll have a cylinder head in place. So we'll need a longer rod installed on this and this will be installed higher. We're going to reach down and we're going to find that that piston. We're going to index that engine, and we can actually program this into the the Haltech Elite 1500 in this case. So um, we have perfect timing when it comes to dyno time, and uh, we can extract every single bit of power out of the engine we can. Cool.